Hello right bags, it's Jade, welcome to another Biomutant Guide today, showing you how to upgrade your crowbar so you can get into certain doorways that need level 2 basically, and also how to unlock this crazy little bat. Is he actually any good? I'll let you guys decide once I've shown you where he is, but if you want this as one of your teams, then yeah, I'm going to take you through the steps that you need to follow. And like I said, the crowbar is probably just as important to unlock. If you find it useful, give me a like and let's go with another Biomutant Guide. Okay, pretty early on in the game, you're going to meet a side character called yeah. Pebbles. He's kind of nesting in Knack Hill, just close to the whereabouts, just sort of north of Gizmo and maybe south, sort of west of the Tree of Life. Pretty much you can't miss him. It will kind of pop up when you're close by. So he wants you to learn how to climb and you can see the yellow markers and pretty much that's what he's going to get you to do. I'm not going to lie, these missions are pretty tedious and long as you do have to cross quite a big chunk of the map to complete them all. So basically you've got to climb three spots. The first one's not too bad, it's literally just behind him, so follow the yellow path up. Along the way you're going to come across obviously a little money tree here, so you might as well grab that. And there's a few other little extra bonuses that you can pick up, I think there's like some special ammo or bullets. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. You're going to have to do this another two times and go across the map. And then when you come back to him, that's when he's going to give you, hopefully, a upgrade for your crowbar. But then after that, he wants you to do another three objectives. And like I said, it just all becomes a bit tedious. And just like all side missions, it's really clearly pointed where you've got to go for the next stage. So you might want to just do this as you go. Or if you really want to buck knuckle down, you can head straight for some of these. So this next one's just slightly northwest of the Tree of Life. A little bit tougher to get to this one. You have to go pretty much right around the side of this mountain until you find the yellow drops. So you can see you've got the flat piece here. That's it. Just climb up and that's it. It's simple. Again, there's another little box of loot around this place when you get to the top. But not much else. I didn't really find anything on top of this mountain. But the next one has got a few extra little pieces that you might want to know about. For this one, we're heading just to the northeast where the Mushmaya spot is. I will show you on the map in a second. Best to do this in the daytime because there is a sundial on top of this rock formation. Now, the sundials reveal a cave location where you'll be able to get in. And there's quite a few tough enemies in there, but it's definitely worth doing. And I think there's four of them. So you can then find the rest of them if you haven't come across one of the sundials already. Obviously, a few resources here as well. And there is a money tree. And you can see just ahead of us is the sundial. I'll just show you, there's the money tree on one side. No enemies, there weren't anything here, uh, but I did make the mistake of coming here at night time, and it was a pain in the butt having to come back here during the day to do this one. So return to Pebbles, and guess what as well? He wants on your Ark ship. All right, spoilers, there is a spaceship. It's pretty much revealed at the very beginning of this game, and you can take some passengers with you, and he's one of the choices. I'm not 100% sure if he gives you the bat as a reward for allowing him on your ship. I kind of hope not because I wonder what some of the other guys I kind of turned down by not letting them come on in my first playthrough. But yeah, generally maybe save the game just before you make the decision with him and test it out and let me know. Refuse him a seat on your ship. What happens next? But we're not done yet. I gave you a bit of false hope there. Now we've got to go and do some zip lines and it is part of this game's glaring issue is that some of these missions are just simply too far away like I get they want you to really explore and travel the map but when a next part of your mission is literally like 2,000 meters away or 2,000 kilometers away or whatever it is it's just a bit ridiculous but yeah on this one you've got to go and zip line down the exact zip lines hopping onto the tree to get up to the top it really is quite mind numbing stuff going on. It would be much better if these were kind of grouped together and all close together. Especially considering that the uh, bat, I've got to say, isn't really probably worth your time. The crowbar, absolutely, you'll come across lots of the bunkers that you need the crowbar to get into for loot, where you find the ping dishes. If this is all gibberish to you, don't worry, you'll come across it. But the ping dishes allow you to find some special suits that help you with some of the radiation zones or the biohazard zones. And you can pretty much go through there and not take any damage whatsoever. Each one of the ping dishes that I visited has had some sort of locked door that I could only access with the level 2 crowbar. 
as said the missions point exactly where you gotta go for the next one so it's just a case of following it if you haven't unlocked their maps or areas well good luck you're gonna to have to just get across there using one of your mounts there's a money tree on this second zip line though so make sure you get this one and if you cross the big zip line where you've got to actually balance across it you'll find another loot box and the last one is just to the east of the tree of life you can just find it in one of the glades next to this big old just past the trunk stuff and it's a mining shaft area and you've got another zip line to go down it's quite a bit of loot in here there's quite some tough enemies though and there is a captive in this location as well and there we go go back to him once more hand him over and now he asks you pretty much if he can get a seat on your arc spaceship I did give him the seat for this one, not because I really especially found him that endearing or his character that cool, just to see, make sure what would happen if I did start filling these seats up. And that is pretty much it. He now says, go up to his nest. At first, I wasn't reading properly, so I was like, what? No reward for that, really? But yeah, you've got to climb back up to where you was originally and this time go higher. Now, I actually did miss, there was a climb spot that I missed on the second stage of this. And I wonder if you would be able to get access to the bat a bit earlier. But it does seem like you can only really get the bat if you've completed all of these quests. But yeah, it's quite easy to miss. Like, you've got to really pay attention to these yellow markings. I kind of wish they was a bit more bolder or a different colour. But keep going up high, and then you see the next lot is here and now as well. And you should be able to get up really, really closely around it. And there you go. There is where we're going to head to another set. In fact, we're going to actually use the zip line to get across to another outcropping. But yeah, this is what I missed earlier. I didn't realise there was these on the side. I just wasn't paying enough attention. Or maybe the zip line wasn't there anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered if I was able to get up this high. But yeah, just jump on the zip line and away you go to go and get the bat. You do find one of these dudes here as well, something to do with Soul, the bookworm. That's a set of missions I've not actually completed properly. And it doesn't seem to be doing much or giving you much or, or doing else-wise. So yeah, once you're done talking to him, you don't really need to. You can then pick up the bat and he is yours. So yeah, I definitely think you can't get access to him until you've done them side missions. He moves pretty quick on the ground considering, you know, he's not really a land animal. I'm just so disappointed that it doesn't really go very fast, it doesn't fly very far, it's just a bit of a letdown as a creature, like it's glaringly an issue in this game, that sometimes it just don't really get to go as far or quick enough as you want to in the air. I even decided to test it to see if it was true, because I kind of just felt like if you've got the automaton upgrade, which you can usually get fairly early in the game, it's like the second upgrade, or you can choose it as the first upgrade if you really want, you can get the glider wings, and it pretty much only gives you a tiny little bit of extra distance compared to them. Now, I wish I could tell you how to get the Altman upgrade. I think it just gives it to you kind of randomly once you get to certain stages in the quests. But yeah, just look. Like, really, that is it. That's the big difference. Now, obviously, when you're higher, you may get a little bit extra, but there's no button combinations. I tried every button going to see if it would give me a boost or a dodge or a roll. And, yeah, just quite disappointing, I'm not going to lie. So, don't get it for the bat. Do the missions to get the crowbar, and then move on with your life. Don't complete the second set. The bat looks cool, uh, but it's really just not worth your time or effort, unless you really have not chosen... The right ottoman upgrade and you didn't unlock the wing glider suit uh, a bit earlier i guess that might be the only reason to really go out your way to get the bat since you haven't unlocked the ottoman ones next up on the agenda is the little mini helicopter i think you can get so i'll show that to you guys very soon if you found this video useful leave me a like and i'll see you at bags for more go and check out the rest of my guides as well until next time laters